There we go. Yep. No. Nope. Usually it works if I do it, turn it off, and then turn it on again. Check, checking, checking. Nope. Okay. Nope. No. I can yell. I can yell. It's cool. It's, it's cool. a small room. You can use this one. No, 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 no. Okay, wait. There we go. All right. So, um, What's my schedule? Oh, that's oh, yeah, sorry. Got my laundry list on I just need something to read. I love to read. <laughs> I'll read this. I was gonna, I was gonna say, um, some of us, I think, need a little bit of waking up. So we were kind of hoping that you would tell us all that we are worthless and weak. Oh. oh. <laughs> uh, some of us might need it. Yeah. Uh, oh, I have to admit them to tell no, us. Tell, no, no, to, you, no, 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 you, you can, because I think we might need Tuck up those pajamas. <laughs> Is that a punch pit? On <laughs> your uniform. Very good. Yeah. Oh, work for some weight. Woo. Drop it. Give me 20. <laughs> <laughs> That was, oh, yeah. that was the best hangover remedy, I think, for them. Yeah. yeah. I could make you do push-ups, but I won't. <laughs> I probably couldn't That's make you do push-ups anyway. So how are you doing? I'm doing well. I'm doing well. It's been a fun ride. It's been a nice ride here in uh, Minneapolis. Yes. Uh, or we're in actually Bloomington, aren't we? Yeah. yeah. Bloomington, yes. I used to come over here a lot when I lived in Wisconsin with my son, because you have a great zoo. As I've told a couple of people here, really one of the best tiger exhibits and a great Przewalski's horse exhibit. It's one of, the, I think it's one of the earliest ones. Uh, Przewalski's horses are these great horses that uh, come from Mongolia, and uh, the oldest. I think I don't know. My son knows all this stuff. I don't know, but so yeah. So it's been nice, even though I've been inside most of the time. But it was very nice of you guys. Just for, I don't know if you did it just for this convention or what, but to put that. Wildlife refuge. Yeah. I felt like you did it just for me because I love to go for walks. So I've been over there for a couple of walks, and it's nice. It's very nice over there. I recommend it. Yeah, it is. It is beautiful. My husband and I live in Bloomington, and we're we're not within stumbling distance of here, but we're within uh, Uber stumbling distance if necessary. But we go to that quite a bit, and yeah. we love it. It's it's quite beautiful. We're very nature people. Yeah. You know. Yeah, it's really nice yeah. to have that. It's an, it's an urban wildlife refuge, and there aren't too many of those. No, I don't they're know. not. They're not. Now, you um, you touched upon uh, living in Wisconsin. Right. Uh, you I did. you uh, transplanted to Wisconsin after you had left California at some point. I left California, and I lived in Manhattan, in New York, for most of my professional life, and then I moved, got married. She didn't like New York too much, and uh, New York was also getting a little. It was like 93 is when I left and went to LA, and it was getting a little. I lived in the Lower East Side, it got very, a lot of crack cocaine, it got very violent and not as nice a place to live. And uh, we were trying to have a kid, so we moved to LA in 93 and then moved to Wisconsin. I pretty much retired, quit the business in 2000, and moved to Wisconsin and bought a restaurant called Libby Montana. Uh, uh, my wife's name, ex-wife now, but her wife at the time, the name was Libby, and I had wanted to go to Montana when we left L.A., and she wanted to go to Wisconsin, where she was from, so we compromised, and we did what she wanted to do. <laughs> uh, I was told that's how marriages work, you just say, yes, dear. Um, turned out not to be the case, in my case, anyway. Um, and that way I could get up every morning and go to Montana and I didn't have to leave Libby to do it. That was the joke that I told when, people, when I sat people at the restaurant. But, uh, yeah, what was the question? We were just talking about Wisconsin and how, how yeah. you, you also, uh, I mean, aside from being a restaurant owner, you did sneak back into some film because you taught, uh, you did some screenwriting workshops or, or something that affected and I think you also got involved in short films. I, 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 I retired and quit the business, but I did say, hey, uh, the caveat was, of the, uh, was that if anybody asked me to do anything, I would do it. So I went back and did an episode of Angel. Uh, Joss asked me to go back and do an episode of, of the, in the final season of Buffy. But I was doing a play at the time, so, and people asked me to do plays, and I grew up in the theater. I didn't grow up well. My earliest experience of uh, being in front of a lot of people and saying whatever I damn well please was in the theater. 
So I went back and did the theater. I went and did back and did plays at a place called Ch uh, First Stage Children's Theater there. And uh, and I did while I was living in Wisconsin. I worked for Milwaukee Film, which puts on the Milwaukee Film Festival. And I created, to your question, I created a program called Collaborative Cinema, where we invited high school students from all over Milwaukee to write a a pitch, basically, for a short film. And then we would take, take the best 50 pitches, the best 50 ideas, and we would bring them to a workshop with professional screenwriters and filmmakers <laughs> and show them how to take this idea and turn it into a script. And we workshop them, then we picked the best 25, I think, and we out of the 50 that came in, and we take them to another workshop and show them how to make that screenplay better because writing is really all about rewriting. And then we would pick the best of the screenplays and make a short film. And every year, I think for six years I did that, we made six, uh, I produced uh, six short films by, that originated with a high school student's idea. And the films were made using high school students as interns, using college film students as crew and professional crew. So these, everybody got to work with everybody else. Professionals got to work in a teaching situation with high school kids and with college kids. College kids got to exercise all the stuff they were learning and the high school kids got to be in this environment. And it was a very, it was a good program. It doesn't exist in now. When I left, when I left Milwaukee in 2013 to move to Montana, and it, it, after I left, it kind of dropped off, and they don't do it anymore. I'm, it's, just, it's too bad, because it was a good program. Anyway. That, that's a shame, though. I mean, that's got to be such an invaluable experience. I think it, the, the feedback we got at the time, and, and, the, and I still am in touch a little bit with some of the students that went through, whose scripts we produced, who then went on to go to film school, and are now trying to make films on their own. The feedback was, that, yeah, it was very, very positive. And the filmmakers that I worked with, the professional filmmakers in Milwaukee were mostly doing, they were shooting commercials or were directing commercials or teaching or doing industrials. They weren't doing narrative film. And most people wanted to do, and also the, the film school at the University of Wisconsin, Milwaukee is considered one of the best film schools in the country, but they only do, or did at that time, only experimental films. So they, the kind of films where you, you take 35 millimeter film and you scratch on the film and then project it on screen and I don't know what people are supposed to get out of it, but they get something out of it. But they wanted, they were dying to do narrative, so we were doing narrative uh, short films and they were very happy and excited to work for that. So they all, and it, it sort of brought that film community together and gave it a, a, a focus. So yeah, I, I was very proud of that. Uh, of that experience in that time. Were you asked to, did any of the students uh, want you to act in some of those films? Did you, did you did you play any characters in some of those short films? They, some of the people wanted me to, but I didn't do it. I stayed out of the ones that I was producing because I wasn't, I wouldn't have been able, I didn't feel as though I would be able to do, to both act and do the producerial, the producing part of it and stay, give myself enough distance. And as the producer, because we had a budget, just like everybody has, we had a time frame that we had to shoot it. Everybody was doing other things, so we had to work. So the directors, as directors, sometimes need to be um, have somebody over their shoulder saying, faster, faster, that's enough, we got it, let's go. I got to be that guy, the guy everybody hates. Yeah, you got to be Nita Meyer. <laughs> I got, yeah, I tried not to do neither. I tried not to, because that would have stalled things if I'd made them all get down and do push-ups. <laughs> now, in, in terms of